नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग इंडिया में आप सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं हूँ शिखा सचदेवा एग्जाम्स शुरू हो गए हैं जाहिर सी बात है प्रेशर भी शुरू हो गया है चाहे हम स्टूडेंट्स की बात करें या फिर पेरेंट्स की बात करें लेकिन ऐसा क्यों होता है वाई डू वी कनेक्ट एजुकेशन विद स्ट्रेस क्यों ना कुछ मॉडर्न टेक्निक्स की बात की जाए जॉयफुल लर्निंग की बात की जाए ना केवल बच्चों के लिए बल्कि माता पिता के लिए भी किस तरीके से हम जो एजुकेशन है उसको हम इंटरेस्टिंग बना सकते हैं मॉडर्न टेक्निक्स के होते हुए आजकल हम इंटरनेशनल स्कूल्स की बात करते हैं व्हेन यू हैव टू स्पेंड लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स फॉर दो स्कूलिंग क्या कुछ इसका आसान तरीका है बिल्कुल है करेंगे इन्हीं टेक्निक्स के बारे में जॉयफुल लर्निंग के बारे में स्ट्रेस फ्री एजुकेशन के बारे में अपने दूसरे सेगमेंट में लेकिन पहले सेगमेंट में हम बात करते हैं प्रवासी भारतीयों के बारे में हर साल सरकार प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस बनाती है जिसके तहत उन इंडियंस जो बाहर इंटरनेशनली सेटल हो गए हैं उनको वापस बुलाया जाता है यू नो जस्ट टू कम्स कम बैक इन इंडिया एंड लुक आफ्टर द ग्रोथ ऑफ द नेशन लेकिन कुछ ऐसे ही लोग हैं जो भारत में जन्मे पले बड़े लेकिन फिर वो इंटरनेशनल जाते हैं बट दे टेक केयर ऑफ देयर इंडिया एज एयर ओन मदर लैंड ऐसे ही खास में उन्हें हमारे साथ उन्हें आप ऑन्टरप्रन्योर कहो उन्हें आप राइटर कहो फिलेंथ्रोपिस्ट कहो सिविक राइटर कहो ही हैज लॉट्स मैनी फेदर्स इन हिस कैप उन्होंने बहुत ढेरों काम किए हैं हमारे लिए आपके लिए इस देश के लिए सो टू टॉक अबाउट हिज जर्नी हिज अचीवमेंट्स द चैलेंजेस ही फेस अबाउट हिज जर्नी आइए जानते हैं मेरे साथ बहुत खास मेहमान है डॉक्टर फ्रैंक एफ एस इस्लाम यू आर एफ आई इन्वेस्टमेंट थॉट लीडर सिविक लीडर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मिस्टर इस्लाम आपका यस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टाइम आई एम फ्रैंक इस्लाम सो फ्रैंक इस्लाम एंड वी टॉक अबाउट इंडिया इंडिया ऑफ कोर्स आई एम श्योर have a you know it might be the center of your heart when we talk about your feelings your connections with india but your journey from aligarh azamgarh and then america would have been interesting one can you share your thoughts and challenging one challenging as well. well i love india i was born in india and i love the indian arts cultures and rituals india is a global beacon of hope and democracy and diversity of the world and, and that's the things that I'm going to talk about it in my speech in about an hour uh about the US India relationship. So to answer your questions and you have a very interesting and and thoughtful questions and and thank you for asking the questions. So I was born in Azamgarh. Hmm. Um and I have never lost love of Azamgarh. What's best in me I owe it to Azamgarh. Its leader have shaped our history. Hmm. And uh and my parents taught me something that I always cherish, nourish and nurture. love of education a passion mm. a commitment to education absolutely if i have not gotten the education if they did not infuse in me the love of education i would never cross the atlantic ocean to realize the american dream and i embody the american dream so i went to aligarh muslim university which is not uh, uh, and uh, one of the professor wolfgang throne who was a professor at the university of colorado in boulder mm. uh, came to aligarh muslim university as a visiting scholar i believe mm. and he sort of talked told my ter- my parents that i want to take this kid to america they said take him so i i was here i am 15 years old left america i uh, left india as a matter of fact and uh, without any parental guidance mm. but i always wanted to get a good education so mm. i got my bachelor's degree and master's degree from university of colorado on boulder that gave me the a real world grounding but i wanted to be a business person you talk about entrepreneur i wanted to be a business owner and make a difference in people's lives so but i needed the experience yeah, so absolutely. after i educa- after i got the my degree that came to washington dc area and uh, i worked for two information technology company to get the experience yeah. and the real world grounding and that and then after that um, i became an entrepreneur in 1994 i bought a company for $45,000. Mm. I mortgaged my house and you, if you ever talk to my wife she will say I'm not sure why you want to do this and my wife ha- is an American and and I love her very much but I did. Mm. That was the best investment that I ever made. That 45,000 yielded to several hundred million dollar. So within 13 years uh, my my management team and I were able to grow that company for one employee that's mm. me to 4,000 to employees and to 300 million dollar in revenue and then i sold the business in 2007 to mr ross prod you probably heard mm-hmm. of him mm-hmm. he ran for the president of the united states also uh, against george h w bush and president clinton 
and and that gave me the financial independence. Then I then my wife and I started the foundation, Frank mm -hmm. Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation, which focuses on education, which you mentioned, arts and culture, mm -hmm. and civic engagement and world peace. Uh, um, and we can we can you can ask me about education, but the thing which I want to highlight about the uh, importance of the arts and arts, mm -hmm. art, as President Kennedy says, nourishes the roots of our culture. Art transcends our boundary and all represents the best of our humanity. Mm -hmm. And I'm also very civically engaged. I have Frank Islam Civic Engagement Institute. And I also um, involved in a conflict resolution. And I've given a several million dollars to U.S. Institute of Peace to make mm -hmm. sure that the, we have a world which is a conflict free. We should not look at the God in heaven, mm -hmm. the God that we worship. We look at the family that we are on this earth. Absolutely. And, and that's the reason I'm also interfaith dialogue, which, is, which, Im, which allows us to build the bridges of understanding and cooperation, and also brings people together. The democracy and diversity, those are the two values that binds us together as an American Indian. And, and diversity brings us uh, together. Diversity makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. And when we're stronger and together, we can help shape a better future absolutely. for India. Absolutely, we, we can change the world. So I would <laughs> say from you the- very, You very well said. We can change the world, absolutely. So you talk about from the world peace to education, to being an entrepreneur, to you know, actually expanding and multiplying from being number one to now thousands and thousands. So you know, what made you coming back to India, to spend here in India, to get engaged more in India, because you were doing so well back then in America? Well, uh, I would say that the I would have not crossed this ocean if I were not born to India. I love this country very much, and I want to give back. Hmm. So I'm reminded and guided by the words of President John F. Kennedy. Hmm. And I quoted Kennedy when I uh, talk about the arts and culture. I sit on the board of the trustees of Kennedy Center for Performing Art, appointed by President Obama, hmm. uh, who happens to be a good friend. So, the, so your question with regard to why I come back hmm. to India, and I come back every two years. I want to give back to this country because this country has been good to me. And I also want to give back in uh, education, which mm. is the most important part of it. So I came here about three years ago to mm. inaugurate Frank and Debbie, my wife Debbie, Islam Management Complex at the Aligarh Muslim University. Mm. And that management complex had innovations and entrepreneurship center. And I mm. hope we can create one day mm. Silicon Valley between Aligarh and Delhi. Wouldn't that be nice? Absolutely. And we can create jobs, build, build mm. employment, and, and, and make a difference. And especially mm. the young, um, young, young people minds. are the hope of tomorrow, the promise and potentials of, mm. and possibilities of uh, India and the world. So, so I did that, and I was a convocation speaker, and I gave the speech. And then after this year, I came to uh, give another half a million dollars to Aligarh Muslim University to build Frank and Debbie Islam uh, auditorium at the School of Journalism, which is very important. That's you amazing. know you're a journalist. Yes. And I believe, my wife and I believe in democracy and also believe the freedom of press, which is, mm. a, and they are the corn, the freedom of press, the cornerstone of the democracy of India and for, mm. for, ma for that matter, for the world. Unfortunately, I was not able to go there because of the, what happened at mm. Ligar Muslim University in terms of the unrest and they were not able to secure mm. me. So I will come back with my wife in October, and hopefully you'll interview her when she comes back uh, uh, to inaugurate the, mm. the complex. Absolutely. I, uh, on the topic of the mm. freedom of press and the journalist, and you are a journalist, and you're a wonderful journalist, and thank you for what all Pleasure. you do to make a difference, is uh, we also sponsor through our foundation uh, uh, journalists that come from India to the United States. And we did that last year for Hindustan Times, and mm. before that we did somebody from a DNA newspaper, mm -hmm. which I think is in mm -hmm. Gujarat. Mm -hmm. So, and the idea is that they get the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman, which is my wife's mm -hmm. name, is the project, is the fellowship. Mm -hmm. So they can learn about America's character, conscious mm -hmm. America's values, and, and, and promote their democratic values. Those are the values that binds us together from, mm -hmm. from America and India. So that means the values are binding together, as you rightly said. And of course, during the course of your answer, one more point thing that attracted me was the job opportunities. We need to talk about job creating more and more opportunities. But before that, talk about your organization. You know, what's the agenda? What's the purpose when we talk about the purpose? Because as before the, you know, we started the program, you said that everybody has very limited time on this Mother Earth. So we have to get the maximum out of it. So when we talk about your organization, what's the agenda, the purpose of it, especially when we talk about the international, the global perspective, and especially about India? Well, the, the, when I sold my business in 2007, I had the uh, financial independence and cash to, so that I wanted to deploy my own cash. 
uh, to establish Frank uh, FI Investment Group, and the and the concept behind the FI Investment Group was to to uh, give money, seed money, the capital right. seed money, to the young business owners and entrepreneurs so they can go out to create a jobs and be become another Frank Islam, which is what I want Absolutely. them to be, yeah. uh, and embody the uh, American dream or the Indian dream. Mm -hmm. So. And that's the purpose mm -hmm. of that. I, so I invested uh, several million dollars in India to start uh, uh, in new businesses. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I did not do very well personally because of the year 2007. At that time, you know, American, uh, well, if you look at the Wall Street, Wall Street, they probably took a toll on it. At that time, uh, yeah. our economy was not doing very well. But um, now I do not invest as much. But what I do invest in education mm. and invest in India and around the world um, the four I, I mentioned, education, uh, civic engagement, which is very important to be engaged civically, uh, and also also in the world peace and arts and culture. So th I continue, continue to invest in those areas, and, uh, and, and that's important to me personally. We, we have to make a difference, and, and we need to be a difference maker, and that's the only way we can help shape a better future. Uh, and we have a short time in this planet of Earth, as we mentioned to you, and mm. we have to make a difference. So I think from your experience of the challenges you have faced and you have learned so much, you are actually giving out to the generations to come. But you know, talking about a visit to Delhi, you have been recently, I would say recently, but back in 2015, you visited with your dear friend Barack Obama during the Republic Day 2015. Just share your experiences. How was that trip? Well, <laughs> I came, uh, this was a wonderful experience, and uh, flying with the President of the United States is a, is a, is a, is a truly an honor and a privilege. Mm. Uh, and uh, there's no traffic problems if you, f if you go uh, on the, with, uh, on the, uh, and his car and all those things that they have, every, all, the tra all the traffic is just stopped mm. and so on and so forth. And so uh, President Obama asked me to travel to India with him to, uh, in order for us uh, to celebrate the India's Republic Day. Mm. India's, right, that's President Obama, India's Republic Day, uh, which was, uh, and Prime Minister Modi was just a wonderful person. He embraced the uh, American president. The people of India embraced him, and mm. I was privileged to be there. Then I also went to Rashtrapati Bhavan and, and have a, had a dinner there. Uh, this is uh, Prime Minister Modi also, so we met uh, and uh, so those are the good experience. But the thing which was attracted to me is uh, how do we establish and promote the relationship in terms of the business relationship with India and the United States. And that's the topic of discussion that I have this mm. evening when I give a speech on uh, promoting U.S.-India relationship. It's close to $80 billion trade is. And by the year 2030, take my advice, mm. we're going to have a $1 trillion U.S.-India trade relationship. And that's that what, would be phenomenal. And, that, uh, and that's the Prime Minister, and that's uh, uh, Modi. Uh, so that was the purpose of that uh, meeting was. Unfortunately, President Obama has to go. We had a dinner together the night before when he gave a speech the next day, then he has to fly to Saudi Arabia because King Abdullah passed away. Uh, but it was a great meeting. And I love, I, I, you know, the thing which attracted to me most is the love and affection of mm. the Indian people to the President of the United Undoubtedly. States. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. And he's a, he's a great person. He's a great orator, he's, he's a very eloquent speaker, mm -hmm. and all of the above. But Indian people embraced him. And, uh, and this, is, this, is the, this is the value the Indian diaspora bring to, to India. And India diaspora have the capability, the capacity, the Absolutely. responsibility mm. to help India achieve its fullest potential, not only in investment, but also in education, in sector. employment, as well as U.S.-India relationship. There are many, many sectors that they can help, which is what I do, which is what I want to do. Absolutely, from education to art and culture to all the sectors that you're and rightly. Uh, you're absolutely, and health, 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 health care is so very important. So I think they important. all are connected yeah. when you empower them, especially when you talk about the empowerment of mind and soul. I think once you're empowered mind and soul, you're empowered in the education sectors, then we can have, we can actually change the future for the generations to come. Well, uh, I think you have a uh, selected a, a very interesting topic, education. Uh, so let me let me say a couple of things about education hmm. and uh, our core president, uh, Obama, also. If I would have not received the educations, I would have not crossed the Atlantic Ocean to go to America. I would like to say that America's inclusiveness and openness that provided me the ladders of opportunity to succeed. Those are the strength and the values and qualities of America all of us can proudly and truly embrace. And this is the values that we need to instill and infuse in this nation to become mm. inclusive, tolerant, as well as 
uh, so we can build a fairer and stronger India. Education is the key ingredient of a success. Mm. Education empowers the mind and uplifts the soul. Mm. Education, President Obama, as uh, since you quoted, he said it will be the currency of the 21st century. Mm. Education is a bridge to the future, it's an opportunity creator. And it, it also gives you the, uh, uh, in addition to that, it, it builds the bridge for you to, to climb the ladders of success. And, and I say to the young people who are listening to me, get a good education, do not drop out of the college, mm. because we need you, the world needs you, and God needs you. Absolutely. So I've been so many entrepreneurs, so the young minds who might be listening to you, they do think that education is the basis. So now especially you've been lured there when you back to Meghalaya as well, Varanasi and Meghalaya, some of the important projects there. You know, briefly just tell us about that as well. Okay, so um, um, the, I went to Meghalaya and, I, I, and the governor has given me the doctor of uh, mm. science degree, which was, very, uh, which was a great accomplishment. And, I, and the fellow who founded the university, University of Science and Technology in Meghalaya, I may not have pronounced it correctly, it was a great moment in, in my life. I was delighted and I was honored to be there. And that fellow who founded the university about 10 years ago, I think, is from, is from Aligarh Muslim University. So there was a bond that binded us together. Mm. He's, a, he's an educationist, I'm an educationist. Uh, he, he went to Aligarh, I went to Aligarh, so we bonded together. I, and I saw this young man, uh, fellow, and I don't think he could be more than 50 years old. He established this and, and, and have, he have this university, and he has given, it was a, it was a great experience. And, and then I went to Varanasi, and from Varanasi to Azamgarh. Now, one of the things I want to talk about mm. the Azamgarh that I, d I did not mention, the purpose of my trip, to establish a Frank and Debbie Islam uh, health clinic in the village that I was born in Asmugar. Mm. Uh, it, it looks like America. It's such a beautiful, it's a very small though, but I want people to get a good, uh, not only a good education, but good health, health because health healthcare is in, in this country is for the privileged and the rich people, not for the poor people or the middle class. So I want them to get a good health and preventive health and make sure that uh, we can get a doctor over there who can take care mm. of the people over there in the surrounding villages. And I also did one more thanks, and that I'm very grateful to my mother. Uh, I established a girls' college. I do believe that the education for the girls mm. is a very, very important. This should not be confined to the four walls, especially the Indian Muslim girls. Mm. They, and, uh, they, they should not be isolated. Their voices should not be ignored. And they have the capacity, I believe, mm. to determine their own destiny if they go get good education. Mm -hmm. And there's 50, more than 50% of the people in India mm -hmm. are women. We need to give, we need to exploit their fullest potential. Absolutely. To, so that they can achieve their, they can achieve what they want to achieve. And they should look at Ms. Mrs. Gandhi, who was the prime minister. Mm. And they should look at the Pepsi Cola CEO, Indra Nuri, who's mm. a personal friend, and many, many others who shaped India and I want them to be one of them. Absolutely, you know, so from health, I would say to education, every sector in which we are working in. So before we wrap up the discussion, you know, you're talking about the girls, especially with we, I would say the youth of today, they shouldn't be confined to the four walls. They have to look beyond the horizon. So they should be given more opportunities, and venture into the new more horizon. benefits, more opportunities so that they can work across and can actually, you know, do good with their future. Do well, but do good. Yeah. So let me, let me give some advice to the uh, uh, young, young budding, minds. Uh, Indians who are who are the who are strong, huh. who are vibrant, who are resilient, and who, dream who are ready to who are ready to capture the heart of the millions, who are oh. dreamers and doers. Hmm. They're both, and so I tell them to them to get a good education. As I talk to you about that, and hmm. also be the best you can be, hmm. and and have knowingly, unknowingly, you're carving out your own journey. My hmm. journey was Frank Islam journey. The Stephen Jobs journey was the Stephen Jobs journey. And the job of Bill Gates was, job, was his journey. Mm. I also say do well, but do good. Mm. I also say help others to succeed when you are successful. Mm. I also tell them to, to make sure that make other people successful because if they're successful, all yeah, of okay. us will be successful, India yes. will be successful, and the world will succeed. Yes. And I also tell them create your own destiny and your own legacy. So those are the things that I have yeah. uh, for the younger people. And you are the hope of tomorrow, I will say to the younger people, 
be the best you can be. You have the capacity to change the landscape of India. Absolutely. To start coming from your mouth, sir, it matters the most. You know, as a I mentor, as a guide. Oh, well, it matters from you as, as well. An, as, an, as an advisor, I would say, as you said, you know, not only education, in every walks of life, given an opportunity, we have to work better. So if we have a guide like you, of, of course, not only in India, we'll say worldwide, we will leave our imprints. On that note, thank you so much for joining in and all the very best for all your future endeavors. Keep visiting India because India is beautiful. India is beautiful. India, we, we want India to, to become more beautiful. Absolutely. बिल्कुल तो इसी तरीके से हम कहेंगे कि आप एजुकेशन सेक्टर में नहीं बल्कि बाकी सेक्टर्स में भी यंग माइंड्स की बात करें तो थिंक